Welcome to the final series of Breakdown Bottle project. And I forgot at least time to show you the lighting setup and the whole structure of the scene. Let me zoom out. Just a green plane with a little bit of geometry, area light at the top, area light at the side, just to add few light and highlights at these bevel edges. And the top one, add more light to our scene. It's almost burned this thing here. And now I can improve it with redshift camera, exposure, exposure override enable. And here we can decrease this allow over exposure value. For example, 0, 5. We don't have this blown out. And the dome light is back to Grayscale Gorilla Studio Metal Pack. Just very good HDRI pack I use in 9 of 10 of my projects. Now we're going to the next scene. This is one of very complex scene because of slow Cinema 4D dynamic. There are some geometry, simple sweep with circles and displacer. This rope material I found in the preset. Just going into content browser, preset, rope, and there is a textures I've been using for this project. And the main complexity was to find the proper value of soft body. But the main principle is very easy. We have object, for example, like torus, just for simpler understanding of what is happening in this scene. Torus, for example, like this. One more torus at the side. And one more in between. Like this, maybe thinner. Two torus are set to collider body with static mesh, and one is soft body. Simulation, soft body, hit play, and it very slow because there are a lot of segments here. We're going to display guru shading lines or NB. Select our spheres, torus, and decrease pipe segments into the half, at least, maybe six or eight. Then we can add redshift, object tag, and geometry tessellation, so it smooths out. But now we have much faster preview, but with some problems. We're going to this torus and maybe decrease segments. We don't need a lot of them to this one. Hit play, very fast preview. And if you have some problems, you can go into mode, project, dynamics, expert, up, stepper frame, and maximum solver. For example, 20 by 20. It slowed down the simulation, but it will be more correctly. We can move our torus to the side and our objects start to stretch. I use the default settings. Just find the proper stretching and moving elements to the side. Like this. One more interesting thing I create in this project is this inner bubble. Sphere cloner with spheres with inverted normals and the same material uh, as for the liquid and it creates this inner bubble let me show it in separate project there is our bubbles and plane with linear field to create this growing effect plane effect is set to minus one into the scale and linear field can create zone where our bubbles start to scale up Glass, plastic, rope. Rope materials are very simple. We have this rope color. We recolor it. 
from black and red to gray and yellow, bump texture going to bump, normal texture going to bump with tangent space normal, we have bump blender, blend it out with blend weight 05, we can add additive mode, it's up to your eye what result you want to achieve, I use these settings, small bokeh with hand picked focus distance like something here. No, we don't go to the next scene because there are some dome light which is different from other scene because we need this type of reflection and want area light to light our ropes. In project I use include mode and just to light up only our sweep because I like how the bottle is reflected and lighted by the dome light. One of the simplest but very hard to calculate scene. In Displacer we can load extrude elements in fall off and add smoothing and jiggle just to make this deformation. For example, if we have some plane, some maybe mask, extrude like this, going to plane, going to displacer, to fall off put our extrude, in extrude set not maybe points but surface and add radius, and in displacer add strength and in shading we'll use just color, the white color, you'll see that our radius will build a falloff for our displacement. The higher density of the plane, the more closer to our original form. Then we're going to remapping, going to contour, curve, create something like this one, and add animation speed. The higher value, the smoother our animation will be. Also, we can add jiggle for maybe additional waving, smoothing, and all that stuff. It's up to you how to combine these effects. I decrease maybe the strength, just small strength and smoothing. Then, of course, you can add. As I said, redshift object, geometry, overwrite, and add tessellation to smooth the geometry for final render. And the main trick is what to place these cloners, uh, these objects with screw elements from the content browser. And the great thing is that if we use cloner in mode object and one count, this seed can allow us to put our object almost in any place we need in our geometry. So I found different seed and it's like uh, string by string. So line one, line two, line three. So just skipping, moving and very simple workflow. Two materials, uh, the grayscale gorilla wood and just aluminum for the screws. The dome light is the one I use in almost every scene before. This is the most complex scene because of a lot of dynamic and I start with lighting. I have redshift sky, have a sphere with simple texture that is set to tiles in four times. Then I rearrange to have proper angle of view. I use sphere just to have this small deformation of background, not flat like I was using a plane. Then I use XP Ocean Generator that can generate a full map, full map you see. And in material I use ramp recoloring from black to white that we can recolor that map. This is not close up so I didn't raise the resolution higher 
and it looks, I think, pretty well. The background is done with landscape and grayscale gorilla ground map, or you can use mega scans to build these rocky elements, just geometry with maybe displacement map, a little bit of tessellation, enabling bump mapping, a piece of ground at the front and a piece of ground at the back and sphere around. So we have this water with XP ocean and a lot of spheres with grayscale cloth textures inside the bottle. The bottle is also a glass with a dispersion. You see this kind of color separation and also we use this bokeh for creating chromatic aberration. Clean and aberrate it. Now I show you how to create this filling of the bottle. I use very simple method that doesn't require high level of skills. We'll create some filling zone. Right click, simulation, collider body. Be sure if you're using R19 or R20 just to set manually to proper shape mode for static mesh for tube and automatic for cube. We can create a sphere and B, delete this camera, change to maybe hexahedron or octahedron. I like this type of wireframing. Right click, simulation tag, soft body. And we can add some pressure. Our geometry start to inflate. The trick I use is that disabling dynamic in first frame. And for example, in frame number six on it. So we don't have any inflating and then it pops. So we can duplicate all our spheres, rearrange them, maybe move to the side, just not to have these overlapping. Let me hide all our geometry, hit play, and they start to blow and intersect. Like this, I said wrong, not intersect, but interact with each other because if we intersect them we can have a problems with cloth simulation soft body simulation now we can go set zero in scale and in frame number nine or we can move these point to 11th frame, we'll set scaling to 1. Very simple setup. Also, we add redshift object with geometry tessellation. Add Dome light, and we get smooth geometry. Because if we start to add segments, we'll have a big drop into the speed. Let me show our elements. Render. And then, hand by hand, I pick these spheres and start to fill the bottle shape. This is the last trick I want to show you. There are a lot of spheres you see, and they have different textures, different UV mapping, different tiling for creating random look. And around we have cloner with displacer as a bubble effect and different position. So strength is controlled with signal, so it's like floating, and scale just to provide different scale of our spheres. 
that's all and thank you for watching this series i hope that you find something new and these methods and maybe tricks will help you to improve your project thank you for your attention